Happy Monday. We are at chapter 54 in The Wild Robot. We left off with um, Bright Bill leaving for the migration and leaving Raz behind for the winter. So chapter 54, The Winter. The island was quiet. The migratory birds had le all left, the hibernators were asleep, and everyone else had begun their simple winter routines. Everyone but Roz. Now that she was all alone, our robot didn't know what to do with herself. She stood in her gray garden and watched a sheet of ice slowly form on the pond. Sometimes she could hear her good friends, the beavers, going about their business beneath the ice, and she wondered when she would see them again. Roz stood there until snowflakes started drifting down from the sky. The flakes swirled in the breeze and slowly piled up on the ground and on the trees and on the robot. So she crouched into the nest, slid the stone door behind her, and sat in darkness. Hours and days and weeks went by without the robot moving. She had no need to move. She felt perfectly safe in the nest. And so, in her own way, the robot hibernated. Roz's body relaxed. Her quiet whirring slowly stopped. Her eyes faded to black. She probably could have spent centuries like that, hibernating in total darkness. But the robot's hibernation was suddenly interrupted when a shaft of sunlight fell upon her face and carried energy back to her empty battery. Roz's body tensed. Her quiet whirring slowly started. Her eyes began to glow. Hello, I am Rosam Unit 7134, but you may call me Roz, the robot said automatically. When all her systems were up and running again, Roz noticed that she was surrounded by broken branches and piles of snow. The roof of the nest had caved in and the lodge was now flooded with sunlight. Roz felt more energized with each passing minute but she also felt cold. Her joints felt stiff and brittle, and her thinking was slow. So she got up, cleared a spot on the floor, and made a fire. The snow inside the nest began to melt, and the robot sensors began to thaw. And when she was ready, she climbed out through the hole in the roof and into a bright foreign landscape. The world Roz had known was now covered in a thick layer of snow. Tree limbs bent to the ground under heavy sleeves. The dark pond was now pure white. The only sound were Roz's own crunching footsteps. Faint wisps of steam curled up from the robot's body as she trudged through the forest. Roz plunged a hand into a lump of snow and pulled up a long stick. She snapped it in half and flung both pieces back to the nest. She took a few more steps and picked up a fallen tree. She hacked it into smaller pieces and flung them back as well. Then she reached down to another snowy shape, but what she pulled up was not a piece of wood. It was Dart the weasel. He had frozen solid. Ross stared at his stiff body for a moment, then decided it was best to leave the poor thing where he was. As the robot continued gathering wood, she found more victims of the cold. A frozen mouse, a frozen bird, a frozen deer, had all the an island animals frozen to death? No, not at all. There were a few fresh tracks in the snow. As we know, the wilderness is filled with beauty, but it's also filled with ugliness, and that winter was ugly. A devastating cold front had swept down from the north and brought dangerous temperatures and huge amounts of snow. The animals had prepared for winter, but nothing could have prepared the weaker ones for those long nights when the temperature plummeted and the wind whipped over the island. Ross returned to the nest, where the fire had melted the interior snow to a muddy soup. She took a minute to warm her body by the flames, and then she began the repairs. She patched up the hole in the dome with a lattice work of branches before adding a layer of mud and leaves, and soon the repairs were complete. But another snowfall might cave in the nest all over again. So Roz decided to keep a fire going day and night to prevent snow from building up on the roof. The robot brought in load after load of firewood, 
and each time she went outside, she was reminded of the frozen weasel and mouse and bird and deer. How many other frozen animals were hidden beneath the snow? Before going in for the night, she called out to whoever was listening, animals of the island, you do not have to freeze. Join me in my lodge where it is safe and warm.